I saw a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and in sight of the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Words from today's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Although the saints and angels in heaven are of a great, almost innumerable multitude, they compose one community with God because they love him with the love God has for himself. They enter into the one act of love that God has for himself. So they love God with God's love. It's one community. St. Paul speaks of this to the Corinthians when he says, they are called unto the fellowship of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. St. John says, if we walk in the light, he also is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. So if we walk in the light, as he also is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. We're part of a one continuous whole, a sea of love. Now this, by the way, is one of the reasons why there are no such things as aliens or Martians. There's no sign of them in the scriptures or any vision of them in heaven given to the saints. They've seen heaven opened up. They don't see any strange alien beings there. Has God hidden them from us? If so, does this mean that there is more than one heaven, more than one act of love of God? Because once you enter into the act of love of God, you can't be hidden. It's one act. So has God hidden them from us? Does this mean that there's more than one heaven? But this does not follow from there being one community of the saints with one God. Are they all in hell, since we cannot seem to find any of them in heaven? This too is not like our God. Are we in for a big surprise when we get to heaven in that we will find all these strange beings there? Or maybe they're humans just like us. But the scriptures say that they come from all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, not planets. God always lets us know these things in advance, and he also speaks through his popes. Pope St. Zachary, he ran into this problem back in the 700s. He reigned from 741 to 752, and a certain man was reported to him, an Irish priest named Virgilius, and he was reported to him through St. Boniface. And apparently Virgilius was saying that other planets were inhabited and that there were other suns and moons. The Pope St. Zachary denounced this, saying, Certain heretics who maintain the existence of a race of men not descended from Adam and not ransomed by Christ, this is to be condemned. Not descended from Adam and not redeemed and ransomed by Christ. God always lets us know these sorts of things. He's not going to put any surprises upon us. He at least gives it to us in a kernel form. So all this alien stuff is nonsense. It's from the devil. It's from the evolutionists trying to convince us of evolution and the Big Bang. And we humans on earth, that's all there is. This is the apple of God's eye. This is the center of the universe. Now let us turn to St. Thomas Aquinas. The church, he says, is a community because her members share the same end, namely blessedness or happiness. For God is of himself and in himself perfect happiness and blessedness. If you have God, you have everything. But angels and men attain happiness by effort and they only possess it by participation in God. St. Thomas says, people who live together in the sense that they have the same end, 
must share with one another what they are doing in such a way that those who have not yet reached the end are led to it. And therefore, we, the ones on the way to happiness, are led into it by the words and examples of those who precede us. Now, here comes the principle. The ones who have already achieved the end help others to achieve it. Again, the ones who have already achieved the end help others to achieve it. And this is the reason, St. Thomas says, why we celebrate the feasts of the saints who have already attained happiness, so that we may be helped by their favors and may be built up by their examples and stimulated by their rewards. But since we cannot celebrate all the feasts of the individual saints because of their number is unknown to us, as we heard in the lesson today, and since in the solemnities we do celebrate, since in the solemnities we do celebrate, we neglect many things, so the church provides to our benefit that she celebrates the festivities of all the saints conjointly at the same time on this day, so that what was not rendered to each individual saint would at least be rendered in this solemn feast. And everything that was neglected would be somehow replenished by it. Thank you, St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Teresa of Jesus, I think, sums this up very simply as this. In the company of saints, we become saints. In the company of saints, we become saints. We see this in the life of the various saints that have preceded us. In the life of St. Catherine of Siena, Blessed Raymond of Capua, he writes... The Lord appeared to her very frequently indeed and had long conversations with her. Sometimes he brought his most glorious mother with him or St. Dominic or both together or it might be Mary Magdalene or John the Evangelist or Paul the Apostle or other saints either all together or each one separately according to his pleasure. Wow, that's amazing. St. Raymond speaking about St. Catherine. Such scenes can be found in the life of many other saints, like St. Teresa of Jesus, who was assisted by Saints Peter and Paul, St. Dominic, St. Clare, St. Peter of Alcantara, and many others. From heaven, they came to her, they spoke to her, they encouraged her. Now consider this moving scene from the life of St. Anthony, Mary Claretta, 19th century Spanish bishop and founder of our missionary community. His biographer writes, During his second year of philosophy, he caught a severe cold, which assumed such threatening proportions that his superiors ordered him to bed. One morning, as he lay feverish and perhaps somewhat fretful, fighting off pneumonia, he was suddenly assailed by what he described as a terrible temptation. Appalled, he invoked the protection of the Virgin, his guardian angel, and his patron saints. He made the sign of the cross and resolutely forced himself to think of indifferent subjects. But the temptation did not withdraw. And then he was amazed to see Our Lady standing before him. Let us listen to his own words. Her dress was bright red, her mantle blue, and in her arms I saw a garland of exquisitely beautiful roses. Myself I saw as a beautiful child on bended knees with hands joined in prayer. The Blessed Mother addressed me with these words, Anthony, this crown is yours if you conquer. I was so absorbed that I couldn't utter one word. Mary Immaculate then placed on my head the crown of roses she carried in her right hand. At my right side there, were, there was a group of saints, all in an attitude of prayer. I recognized only the one who resembled St. Stephen. It was my opinion then, and indeed it still is, that these were my patron saints praying and interceding for me so that I might not succumb to temptation. To my left, I saw a great multitude of demons drawn up in order like soldiers who fall back and to form lines after a battle has been fought. I murmured, what a multitude there is. How strong they look. 
While all this was going on, I did not know what was happening to me. As soon as it was over, I found myself free from temptation and with a joy so deep that I scarcely knew whence it came. Victory over hell. I am positive that I was not sleeping, nor was I suffering from dizziness in the head or from any other infirmity that could cause such an illusion. What made me believe that this was a reality and a special grace from the Blessed Virgin was that, for many years afterward, I was not assailed by any temptations against chastity. If later on an impure temptation came to me, it was so insignificant as not even to merit the name. All praise to Mary. Another victory to Mary. Thank you, St. Anthony Mary Claret. St. Thomas says, the ones who have already achieved the end, help others to achieve it. Let's call upon them. For in the company of the saints, we become saints. Let us strive to become saints now, relying on the help from heaven so that we will be saints together with them in heaven for all eternity in that sea of love, which is that one act of love that God has for himself. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.